Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to take a seat. We're going to start again. Dear guests, welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed your coffee break. Following an insightful discussion on the future of Europe before coffee, we now aim to delve deeper into a country where opportunities and challenges of the continent converge, Moldova. Kava Stiftung welcomes you to our Kava Global Leaders Dialogue, hosting Moldova's President Maya Sandu. President Sandu will open the discussion with an input. Afterwards, my wonderful colleague Nora Müller, Executive Director at Körber Stiftung, will host a conversation with President Sandu. President, welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having me today at the Berlin Foreign Policy Forum. And thank you for the attention to Moldova and to our region. We are at a crucial moment for Europe. We are at a crucial moment for the region, for Eastern Europe, 20 months into the unprovoked war that Russia unleashed against Ukraine. It's a brutal and a long war, and we must be all prepared to continue to support Ukraine as long as it takes for Ukraine to recover its territories and for us to have the chance to continue to consolidate our democracies and to continue to stay part of the free world. We are concerned uh, with the discussions about fatigue, about the war, and we would like to see uh, the unity uh, for support for Ukraine, um, because this is what Europe is about. Europe is about peace and democracy. And uh, today, Moldova is safe. We have peace in Moldova, thanks to the uh, resistance of the brave Ukrainian people, and thanks to the support that you have been providing to Ukraine. While Ukraine is uh, fighting on the battlefield, uh, here in Moldova, we are facing both external and internal challenges. And as you know, Russia, continues to threaten us and continues to try to undermine our efforts and our institutions. And it is using a wide range of um, leverages or uh, instruments. Of course, the energy blackmail, the propaganda and the disinformation, uh, sponsoring anti-government protests that we witnessed at the beginning of the year, and more recently, uh, heavy illegal financing of elections. We had local elections uh, several weeks ago, and even though we had this experience in the past that Russia would support illegally, uh, would finance its political parties, this time they, uh, they invested a lot more money and they were trying to bribe voters this time, not just finance some of the political parties which share uh, Russia's objectives here in Moldova. And it's clear that Moldova cannot stand alone um, um, in, in facing these risks. It's clear that we need to join efforts to fight the disinformation and propaganda, which is a big uh, threat to democracies all over the world, including in Europe. And it's clear that we need to fight together the uh, electoral interference, which again happens in many countries. Of course, it's more damaging in a small and, and still poor country like Moldova. Um, and uh, again, uh, this, is, this is something that we need to, to work together. In the meantime, of course, we have been working to become more resilient. And I can say with certainty that we are more resilient today than a year and a half ago. And I'm saying that uh, given the progress that we have made to uh, reduce uh, the energy dependency uh, on Russia. Uh, a year ago, we were 100% dependent on Russian gas. Today, Moldova on the right bank of Nistru does not consume any Russian gas. And we're working hard to have our independence and have our energy security 
in the electricity sector we're building connections with romania which is going to take uh, two more years but we're working on serious projects and of course we're making efforts uh, to uh, improve the energy efficiency and to invest in the renewables this is an opportunity for the investors hopefully also for the german investors uh, we have been working more seriously on our security sector and uh, I just sent a couple of days ago the draft national security strategy, the new draft security uh, national uh, security strategy to the parliament. And uh, we have been identifying very clearly the threats. And we do say it that Russia is the main threat and Russia's aggression is the main threat to our national security alongside with corruption, which is also a problem that we're trying to uh, tackle. Uh, the economy, of course, uh, is still struggling because of the impact of the war, but we have been taking measures, uh, including with, with the support of our development partners, especially to, uh, to help the small and medium enterprises. We've been doing a lot to improve the business environment. We do understand that it's challenging to convince foreign investors to come to Moldova today because of the war next door. But still, we're doing a lot to improve the business environment and, and we, we will continue to work in this area. Uh, we have been um, creating an energy fund. We have been creating an investment fund. Uh, and by uh, contributing to this fund, uh, you can also help the solidarity lanes build, the, strengthen the solidarity lanes that Moldova participates um, uh, in to, to help Ukraine. Um, and of course, uh, in tackling the internal challenges, we're working hard on justice sector reform and on fighting corruption. It's not an uh, easy uh, reform, but we're very committed. Uh, first of all, this is the promise that we made to our citizens. Second of all, the justice sector reform is one of the main commitments that we have uh, for our EU integration agenda. And we have been making some progress in terms of um, uh, implementing the external extraordinary evaluation of judges and uh, prosecutors because we want to make sure that uh, we do not have integrity problems within the system and then of course invest in the capacity of the system and again uh, we have been uh, helped by our partners the sanctions the international sanctions have been helping us to deal with former oligarchs uh, also Russian proxies who are still using the money they've stolen from the Moldovan state, the Moldovan citizens, uh, and, and trying to undermine uh, the domestic processes and the, the institutions and the reforms. And again, very grateful uh, to Germany and other countries which have been helping us. Uh, with respect to the defense system, uh, we've been working uh, hard, as I said, and we have been consolidating our defense system. And I would like to express my appreciation for the important support that Germany has been providing. Uh, and of course, we still have a lot to do, but um, but but the, the help is, is very much appreciated. In terms of some progress I've, I've been mentioning uh, with respect to the internal reforms, uh, you can see some of it in the international rankings, for instance, with respect to the uh, uh, corruption per perception measured by Transparency International Moldova uh, improved by 24 places in the last uh, two years. We have improved in the rule of uh, law index um, published by World Justice Project uh, by 14 places since 2000. We have made a significant jump in terms of freedom of press. Uh, we improved, uh, we went up from the 89th place to 28th, to 29th, uh, which is uh, ahead of some of the EU, EU countries. But of course, there is still a lot for us to do uh, to consolidate the democratic institutions and, and processes. And of course, the most important uh, part of the internal agenda is the EU integration. And this is what we, we have been focusing on, and this is where, where the most of the efforts have been, in addition to, to the efforts we had to put into managing different crisis situations that we had to, uh, to go through. The EU enlargement um, is a strong message that uh, Europe should send, and this would be a message of unity in defending peace uh, and democracy on the continent. 
And um, we do believe, as Germany believes, that EU accept, uh, enlargement should be uh, merit-based, and that's why we're so committed, and that's why we're working so hard on this. And uh, I'm pleased to say that the evaluation of the Commission has been pretty positive uh, for Moldova. Of course, there are a few things still to, uh, to fulfill, but uh, we believe that the evaluation provides a solid base for a positive decision in December. And of course, we are uh, hoping for a positive decision and we're asking for your support to help us get this positive decision. And uh, as I said, this is going to be uh, a positive decision on Moldova and Ukraine is going to be a strong signal uh, to, of, to Russia and to those uh, autocratic countries which, which believe that uh, democracy is not in, in the best place today in the world and that the democratic world is not uh, strong enough. Uh, we do believe that uh, the EU enlargement is about showing that democracy is strong and that EU is strong enough to, to protect its peace and security and uh, its unity. Um, of course, when it comes to, to challenges and, and how uh, the democratic world and how EU can help, the, the most important issue now is to open the accession talks is to continue to help us economically by opening the market uh, of the EU. We already uh, sent 60% of our exports to the EU market, but uh, there are more things to be done. Uh, continue to support us on judiciary, and this is in addition to the sanctions, continue to help us uh, recover the stolen assets and punish the crooks. Uh, the Moldovan crooks have been hiding outside the country, so this is an additional effort to bring them uh, to justice. Um, invest in Moldova, uh, help us strengthen our transport system. Uh, again, this is also going to help uh, Ukraine. Continue to help us in uh, strengthening our security and defense uh, system. Uh, come to Moldova and invest in our energy renewables and help us strengthen the energy security. Thank you. Madam President, good evening from Berlin. Um, once again, welcome to Kerber Stiftung. Great to have you with us digitally. And if I could, Madam President, let's jump into our discussion right away with domestic politics in your country and Moldova. Um, you mentioned it uh, earlier on. There were uh, local elections held in your country, I think in the, um, in, in the beginning of November this year, and um, these elections were very much seen as a litmus test, as a litmus test for the pro-European orientation of your country. Now, your party um, has come in first, but at the same time, it also didn't win some of the mayorships in some of the major cities, including Chisinau. So I wonder which kind of lessons do you draw from the outcome of these elections, also looking ahead towards next year, where you'll be facing a presidential election? Well, uh, the first lesson is very clear. We need to uh, do better. We need to work harder. And uh, we, uh, we learned this lesson. But at the same time, I would like to uh, present the, the, uh, the summary of the results. Because according to all the analysis, and including the, uh, the civil society uh, analysis, um, more than 60% of the vote is a pro-European vote. It's one thing which the party in power uh, managed to, uh, to get, and the party in power got a good result, which is more than 30%. Um, and, and this, compared to other situations in the past, this is a good result, again, for the pro-European, uh, for a pro-European political party in power. But most importantly, as I said, uh, the total pro-European vote is more than 60%. And including in some of the uh, cities, except for Kishina, which is a special case, but in the rest of the cities, um, these are not members of the party in power, but these are pro-European mayors. They've shown it over the years. Uh, in most of the of the cities, it is the mayors who were already uh, in power who just managed to to keep their. Um, 
uh, diocese because they did a good job in the past. So it is a good result for the um, for the pro-European for, for for our EU um, agenda uh, because there is support as as uh, the polls show. But of course, uh, we need to to continue to work and and to do better. And uh, especially, we need to fight disinformation uh, and propaganda. And we need to learn how to better uh, fight racist interference with elections. Uh, right. This is one of the questions where it's difficult to have good answers. We have tried to learn from other countries, but there hasn't been such experiences where Russia would try to bribe the electorate. And of course, in a small country like Moldova, uh, this can be pretty damaging. In bigger countries, this is a little bit more difficult uh, to do, but in a small country, this can be pretty damaging. And we believe that other small countries in the region should learn from our experience and should prepare for such interference by Russia. Let me jump in here, Madam President, if I may. You mentioned the the polls. Um, once again, to, to repeat what you said, I think um, almost two-thirds of uh, uh, Moldovans are in favor of EU accession, of your pro-European, pro-Western course, but there's also another third um, of your fellow countrymen who say, no, we don't really want to join the EU also. So I was wondering, uh, on a scale from 1 to 10, how would you rate the irre irreversibility of your country's pro-European course in the future? Well, is it I a 7 believe... or is it an 8 or where, where would you see it on that scale from 1 to 10? Well, there is no other option for Moldova uh, than the EU integration. Uh, both uh, if we want Moldova to remain a democratic country and to have the chance to consolidate its democracy, and also if we want Moldova to, uh, you know, to improve its economic achievements and provide people with economic opportunities at home so, so that they will not need to leave. And the EU, uh, uh, you know, the initiation of the negotiations is going to provide us with more arguments because when people see uh, the improvement in, in, in their security, the improvement in their living standards, the improvement of the governance, especially the improvement in terms of uh, the functioning of justice. Uh, all these things are going to, to convince more people that the EU is for the benefit of people and is not what Russia is trying to tell them. Mm -hmm. That point is very well taken, Madam President. Um, let me I'll sort of push you a little further here when we talk about enlargement um, and we'll, we'll look at the example of the Western Balkans. Back in 2003, the EU opened the enlargement process for the countries of the Western Balkans, as we all know. Now, fast forward to this year, to 2023, only one country of those countries, namely Croatia, has become a member of the EU. How concerned are you about enlargement fatigue in the EU and about you know, being kept in that waiting room forever? Is that a serious concern of yours? Well, first of all, the Commission and the Council keep telling us that this is a merit-based process and we're working hard. And as I said, we have a good evaluation by the Commission and we'll continue to work to have even a even more implemented from the commitments, and we understand that there's going to be much more coming, but uh, we are strengthening our capacity and we're sure that we can prove uh, that we can deliver on that. So if it is a merit-based uh, process, then uh, we are optimistic. And second, it is a different geopolitical environment. Uh, we're having this discussion now about the initiation of negotiations because of a different geopolitical environment, and it's for the benefit of the security of the continent uh, to have uh, EU uh, enlarge and open uh, the, the door for, for the countries like Moldova and Ukraine. So I do believe that these two elements are very important and brought together, uh, they should lead to a different story than the one that you described. Right. Madam President, I wanted to jump for a moment um, to Ukraine, um, to, to, to the terrible war that is still going on in your neighboring country. Um, 
do you feel from your point of view, um, looking at this war, does Ukraine really get all the support it needs to win the war against Russia? And what is your message to policymakers here in this town in Berlin? I do believe Ukraine needs more support. And again, I'm very grateful to all the countries and to Germany for the support that you're providing to, to Ukraine. But it is very clear to everybody that Ukraine needs more support. And uh, unless this is understood now, and unless this is being done, the costs are gonna be uh, bigger, greater for everyone later. Of course, first of all, for Ukraine, which is making the biggest sacrifice, but it is going to be a bigger cost for everyone. So no matter how difficult it is, and I do understand it's difficult, we need to, to do more to help Ukraine. And in this security environment that we and, and you find yourselves in, how happy are you with the kind of security guarantees that your country is getting or maybe is not getting from, from the West? Well, Moldova is in a pretty difficult uh, situation. Again, we have peace today in Moldova, thanks to the Ukrainians' resistance. If it was not for the resistance of the Ukrainian people, um, I don't see how Russia would have stopped at the border with Moldova. Uh, so it's Ukraine, but also, of course, as I said, we've been, since the war has started, we've been working uh, with our partners. We have been uh, receiving significant support from Germany. I'm very grateful for that. For our defense system, we have been receiving support from other countries. We are trying to do as much as we can within the neutrality uh, provision in the Constitution that, that we have to work in. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask you on, 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 on that question, really. Um, constitutionally, as you mentioned, your country, Moldova, is committed to, to neutrality. Um, and I think a, a majority of Moldovans still view that um, as an important thing. But with that, you know, security situation that you, you find yourselves in and increasing threats to your country's security, um, are you planning on, on changing that status of neutrality of your country? As you said, the majority of Moldovans uh, still believe that neutrality should be, is the right, uh, you know, uh, place for Moldova. Uh, and of course, we can discuss why is that. I would say that not because most of the Moldovans believe that neutrality keeps us safe. Uh, Again, because of the disinformation and propaganda, some of the Moldovans believe that the moment we start talking about neutrality, Russia is going to attack us. And of course, people do uh, are afraid of the, of the war. Uh, we are having the discussion in the society, but in the meantime, as long as the majority is for keeping the neutrality, we have to do whatever we can to strengthen our defense system uh, within these uh, limits. Uh, but the discussion is there, and you know, if at some point people will, will feel that it should be differently, then we will follow the will of the people. Again, in the meantime, we are just uh, working on strengthening our defense system. Madam President, thank you so much. Before um, I open this to questions from the floor, I have a final question to you. Politico once called you a tightrope walker. Looking ahead to, to 2024, what do you think is going to be your most challenging tightrope walk next year? Well, I do believe that Russia will continue to try to undermine uh, the processes in this country and uh, we have to, to uh, understand a project what they will try to do and prepare our institutions better and uh, keep our people safe. Um, the situation in Ukraine uh, very much will reflect on developments in Moldova. Uh, so we need to, uh, to continue to help Ukraine, but also continue to advocate for help in Ukraine. Uh, we do have, have elections next year, so that's why uh, Russia's uh, interference is going to be greater. Uh, we need to, um, to take care of our economy. This is a very big issue. Again, if the war continues, then uh, the implications on the economy are going to continue to be great. And it's... It's difficult when the economic situation is not good 
it's difficult to consolidate the support for democracy, you know, how the enemies of democracy will try to to show that democracy is weak and it cannot deliver, it cannot deliver economic opportunities for the people. Uh, fighting corruption uh, continues to be uh, an issue, a significant issue in our agenda, because now, in addition to, to the problems that we had before, we have this uh, unity between the corrupt groups in Moldova with Kremlin, and, and they are working together against our efforts to strengthen the, the capacity of our institutions. And we certainly wish you the best of success for, for this important endeavor. Thank you again very much, Madam okay. President. We are very happy that you agree to stay with us for a little longer and also take some questions from our audience here in Berlin. And um, this is the moment now, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, for you to chime in. And I have a First question um, by a colleague from the German Bundestag, Johannes Schraps, you have the floor and you have the mic already. That's fantastic. Indeed. Thank you very much, Nora Müller. Thank you very much, President Sandu, for attending uh, this year's uh, Berlin Foreign Policy Forum. It's great to see you uh, attending this year's forum. And uh, I'm not just speaking in my capacity as uh, the rapporteur for the Social Democratic Party Group uh, responsible for Moldova in the European and Foreign Affairs Committee, but also I'm very glad that since one and a half years um, uh, I'm, I have the honor to chair the German Moldovan Forum here in Germany and supporting bilateral relations also in this capacity. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to say that you mentioned a lot of important steps uh, in terms of reforms, and I would really like to say that especially taking into account um, the very difficult environment of your country, um, that your resolute commitment uh, to uphold this reform agenda and also your remarkable, remarkable personal determination to bring Moldova closer to the European family, at least in my point of view, commands immense respect. And I think you have heard uh, the applause here in the room after your speech. I think this already gives a good sign how a lot of people think here in Germany. It's unequivocal from my point of view. The future of the Republic of Moldova lies in the European Union. And this future is undeniable also in Germany's interest. And as the rapporteur for Moldova, representing the strongest party in the German parliament, I can affirm you that our government and also my fellow parliamentarians um, are keenly aware of this mutual interest and we are really actively engaged in advancing this trajectory. And uh, the impending consent by the Bundestag um, to endorse our German government's agreement with the, Europeans, with the, Council, uh, with the European Council's decision to initiate then um, the accession negotiations with Chisinau, they marks a, a pivotal moment and this step forward is very welcomed wholeheartedly since it also illuminates the significant challenges awaiting Moldova in the coming months and years. And of course, I've been following closely, as Nora Müller already mentioned, the municipal elections uh, which took place uh, in two rounds in the last month. And the presidential elections and the parliamentary elections are coming up in 2025. Um, so um, it's often a cliche, but I think in this case, I think it's really reasonable to claim that these two elections will again truly shape the destiny of your country for a long time to come. And you said it's difficult to have good answers on that. But given these allegations uh, of Russian influence, in the recent local elections. I would like to ask which concrete strategies does your government and perhaps also you personally intend to implement to safeguard the autonomy and the integrity of the upcoming elections while minimizing external interference? I know that this is difficult and that's why perhaps additionally I would like to ask um, in what capacity from your point of view, um, international organizations like the European Union or the OECD um, can contribute in the support and oversight of democratic processes in Moldova. Thank you very much and again, thanks again for your uh, speech. Johannes, thank you very much. Madam President, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for your support. And I really hope that Germany is going to uh, uh, vote for the initiation of the negotiations with, with Moldova and Ukraine in, in December. Um, 
the, the challenges are there, as I said, and uh, we know that Russia is learning from its failures because we do believe that it failed in the local elections to, to interfere uh, to the extent that it wanted. So we understand that there is going to be something new. But, but still, the biggest issue is with the illegal financing of uh, political parties and political campaigns. Moldova has a pretty good law on financing political parties and political campaigns. This is something that we insisted from the very first day we established the political party. Um, the question is, how do you make sure that the law is being observed and who is there to, to uh, identify the money which is not declared and, and the, the money, the illegal money which is, um, which originates in, in Russia. And of course you have the justice for that, the justice sector, but uh, don't forget that Moldova is in the middle of the justice sector reform and many people are not happy that they need to pass now integrity tests because this is what happens in Moldova. We have this external extraordinary evaluation committees um, which, uh, you know, uh, which include people appointed by the EU and other development partners. And then the judges now have to pass the integrity tests. And some of them, of course, are not happy with these reforms. And, and this creates an extra vulnerability. So on one hand, you need to make sure that uh, the law on financing political parties and campaigns is, is observed. On the other hand, you're still in the middle of, of the reform. So... Um, we are trying to learn from other countries, as I said, and it would be good to have some discussions at the level of, of EU, of the countries which are concerned with Russia's interference, because, again, this is not just Moldova, and maybe we can come up with, with some measures. First of all, this money uh, doesn't come straight from uh, Moscow to Chisinau. Sometimes it goes through other countries, so if we are more successful in tackling uh, the, the illegal money flows, that, that would help. Um, and again, this is an issue for us to, to raise. Um, and, and second, of course, fighting propaganda and disinformation. Moldova just established a special unit, uh, according to the, I mean, learning from the experience of other countries on uh, strategic communication and, and fighting uh, disinformation and propaganda. So. It's all of these issues together that uh, we need to continue to work and, of course, to deliver, because the more we deliver to the people, the more results, the more we show what it means to run the country in a European way, the better the results. Many thanks, Madam President. And um, let me look here in our hall, in our conference hall, whether there are questions. And I do see a question right to, to my left. You, the mic is coming to you. You have the floor. Thank you very much. My name is Mariam Goblashvili. I am from Youth Atlantic Treaty Association and from Discutia Mitmia FAO. So, uh, Madam President, we are talking uh, about advantages uh, the membership of uh, Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova has for these countries. But sometimes we are not really talking about advantages the membership of these three countries has for EU. So what kind of win-win situation ha can have enlargement of the European Union? What do you think? Thank you. Well, the, the most important is the security part. Moldova is already playing a role as part of the security belt for, uh, for the euro, for the EU because Moldova is at the border with Ukraine. Our uh, border is 1,200 kilometers. You can imagine that uh, with, with the war in Ukraine, the risks of uh, human trafficking, arms trafficking, and, and many other things have increased. And Moldova has been investing a lot to increase the security at the border by protecting ourselves. We also reduce the risks for the, um, uh, for the European countries. Uh, but second, the most important is for, for the EU is to keep Moldova on its democratic path. Just imagine if today you would have uh, in Moldova a regime, a non-democratic regime controlled by Moscow. Uh, and just imagine how damaging this could be uh, for Ukraine and for what happens today in Ukraine, because then Ukraine would have another 1,200 kilometers of border to, to face, because I'm sure that Russia would have used Moldova against Ukraine. So the main argument is to keep Moldova democratic and peaceful, 
and this is about security. But second, don't forget that uh, Moldova already has one million of EU citizens, uh, and, and they are already working in EU, in EU. And as I said, Moldova is already integrated economically because 60% of our exports already go to EU. So things are really happening organically, and uh, we just need to continue on that path. Madam President, let me jump in with a question um, by one of our online viewers. It's also about um, a facet of your country's um, EU aspiration. Here it is. What is the current status of Transnistria and what are the prospects for resolving this conflict? And what about the Gagauz minority? Well, um since the war has started, our main objective with respect to the transition region has been to keep the situation stable and not to allow for any incidents that might have dragged the country into the war. And we have managed to keep the situation stable. Uh, in the meantime, of course, we are trying to take steps which will uh, bring the, the, two, the, the two banks together. But, um, the, the issue, the main issue now is, is to maintain peace. Uh, we do uh, know about the problems of our citizens on the, on the left bank. We try to, uh, to help as much as possible. You know that the transition region also benefits from the free trade regime with the EU, which has changed the structure of its trade. Today, uh, half of the exports from this region go to the EU countries compared to 100% going to Russia 20 years ago. Uh, so things are changing and uh, we do believe that uh, people on the left bank uh, share the same objectives. They want to live in peace, they want to, to have economic opportunities at home, and they do see that Europe means peace and they do see that Russia means war. Uh, we are working on a solution, but of course we need to have a geopolitical opportunity uh, for, the, um, for the reintegration of the country. And we do hope that we'll have this geopolitical opportunity uh, soon, uh, so that the, uh, the, the accession of Moldova to EU will happen in a reintegrated, with a reintegrated country. With Gagauzia, Gagauzia is part of the controlled territory uh, of the, by the constitutional uh, uh, structures of the country. Uh, people, that, the majority of people that do not support today the, uh, the EU integration. Uh, but uh, again, this is because of a, a big propaganda and because most of the people that don't speak Romanian, we are working on this issue now. We launched this year a program for people to study for free Romanian, and we are happy to see how many people have applied for this program. And of course, we will have to see what will be the results. Um, so we just need to, to continue to work. There are people that, there are, there are young people there who understand the benefit of the of the uh, EU accession of Moldova. There are private sector who understands very well where the economic interests of the country are, but there are still issues for us to deal with. But we don't see this as, as a big issue. We just need to, to continue to work and we need to, uh, to be more successful in fighting the, the disinformation and propaganda. And on the issue of Transnistria, Mad Transnistria Madam President, um, in, in case, Plan A, which is resolving the conflict, doesn't work. Um, do you see any type of Cyprus scenario that might be viable? Would that be an option for you? I said this before. Uh, if somebody wants to say that the accession of Moldova to EU cannot happen unless uh, the reintegration of the country uh, happens before, uh, then this would mean to give Kremlin the veto power on uh, enlargement and on Moldova accession uh, process. And we don't want to do that, and I'm sure that Brussels doesn't want, doesn't want to do that. So we do see uh, this two scenario, of course, uh, the first one, the reintegration first, and then the accession uh, is the most preferred one. but. We do accept or we do admit that that might be uh, a second scenario, which means two steps. 
uh, the accession of the, of the right bank and then the, the accession of the left bank. Again, uh, we want people on the right, on the left bank to uh, benefit from, from the same um, you know, privileges of the EU accession as, as the people in the rest of the country. Madam President, thank you very much. We're at the end of a short but very intensive um, conversation. Um, it's been a privilege to have you here on stage virtually. Hopefully, we'll be able to visit you at some point also live in Chisinau. All the best to you and your fellow Moldovans in these truly challenging times. Goodbye to Chisinau once again. Thank you very much. and. Over to my colleague Sarah yet again. Thank you. Thank you.